also doing Audacity. I'm going to do an extra file here. And so did I, I push, I haven't done this in a long time. And then this, and I believe that's working. I see stuff going. Is it recording? Uh, I don't see any recording going on. Record. Let me try hitting that button again. Dang it. Okay. Now it's going. There we go. Uh, I got that. All right. Let me go ahead and get this uh, that notification here out of the way real quick. I think it ought to be popping up on the Skydies. Let me go to Barman. And I'm going to do a retweet. Okay, we're almost actually officially live in about here in a minute or so. <clears throat> okay. We are live now, officially, on the uh, reallibertymedia.com network, RLMradio.xyz. Whoops, how'd I get that copy there? Is that, uh, was that for me? I'm going to go ahead and do a double tweet then. I don't know, that I had a live link there, but well, that must have been yours. So, I will go back to... I gotta go back over here to catch and copy that again. I did something wrong. I probably have to uh, delete that one. That's all right. <laughs> I've been going at this all day. I think I'd be ready. Copy. And I'll uh, retweet. Now I'll go back to mine. Make sure to I'll just go ahead and delete that so there's no confusion. I don't know what that live. Oh, I, I, I know what it was, I think. All right, tweet that. And I'm going to go to my, t and I'll be back over and we'll be actually having something uh, on the video that will be coming downstream. So everybody's listening in live. We are live right here. And I'm almost, uh, I'm almost actually start this. And I'm um, ad-libbing along the way. Yeah, this one here is going to get deleted. And I'll be done. I do believe. Pardon? Okay, good. Uh, uh, you're screen sharing off of me. Okay. Uh, no, that I'd be all right. I, I um. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Where am I going over here? I forgot. <laughs> I want to go back just a minute. Uh. Yeah, I wanted to look at yours. I want to look at your page. We'll get officially. Oh, I know what I have to do. Is I'm going to start Roger Stone. And I need to go to Twitter and I'll have to find it this way. All right. So we're we're going to uh, Ammon Bundy's page. Uh, official. Ammon's not running it now. Somebody took over for him. And obviously somebody he trusts. And I think I know who it is. Okay, well, I'm turned on here. My mic is over there in, on you. And, and I'm looking away from the mic on this other computer. Can you all hear me in there in the chat room? Give me a hey, okay. All good. Let's, okay, let's, uh, I'm going to uh, ad lib right now. And let's just get this going here. This is from uh, Ammon Bundy, the official page on Twitter. Uh, Roger S uh, Stone speaks to a large crowd after being released. So he's out on a quarter million dollar bail uh, from NBC News. Let me just scroll down and see some more headlines. Uh, 55 minutes ago, uh, Ammon tweeted, uh, breaking news, Roger Stone was arrested this morning by the FBI. And... Uh, I think it's a typo connected to the, uh, Mil the Mueller and uh, the Trump investigation from Oregon Live. Wonder if uh, wonder if that's going to be video or if uh, Maxine Bernstein wrote this. Who did? Associated Press. That's so probably going to be. Uh, um, oh, I'm blanking. If it is him, I'll see it. 
then I'll know, and I'll be able to say, yeah, that was him. Who wrote this? Doesn't say so far. By the Associated Press. What's that guy's name? Doggone it. When I'm not thinking about it, Iowa. See, I don't see the author of this. I'm scrolling to the bottom, and then we'll come back. Really? So I, I think they probably just uh, take it and copy this over. I can't believe they don't even give the author here for this article. It says from the AP. So anyways, we'll just uh, read it here a little bit. The uh, says uh, Roger Stone, a confidant of President Donald Trump, was arrested in the special counsel's Russian investigation in a pre-dawn raid at his Florida home Friday on charges that he lied to Congress and obstructed the probe. The seven-count indictment against Stone, a self-proclaimed dirty trickster, is the first criminal case in months from special counsel Robert Mueller. It goes on to say it provides the most detailed date about how Trump, uh, how Trump campaign associates in the summer of 2016 were actively seeking to politically benefit from the release of, uh, release of hacked material damaging to Hillary Clinton, uh, Clinton's campaign. It alleges that uh, uh, unnamed senior Trump campaign officials contacted Stone to ask when, sto when stolen emails related to Clinton might be disclosed. Uh, so, I guess... Deep fighting, right? Wonder how that'll turn out. I'm gonna tell you the FBI is dirty. What I firsthand know about them, they are dirty, dirty, dirty. And of course, uh, uh, Roger Stone was uh, working with uh, closely with a lot of folks involved with the uh, the uh, Bunny Ranch standoff trial. Yeah, he was in contact with the uh, folks there. All right, so you'll be seeing. Later on, you're listening live in chat. You're not seeing it, but uh, we'll bring this into the, the video for later. Um, Trump shut down. And... All right, so Roger Stone's out. All right, let's go back to, uh, to the broadcast over here, the broadcast page, and a quick look at the uh, chat. Ha, so I guess uh, yeah, y'all are hearing me because Grimner says, look out, I'm turned on. Touch me, turn me on, and turn me loose. And here we go, we're loose. This is a Ponder Gander with, uh, I'm your host, Vincent Easley, the second. This is the 25th of January, 2019. This is a radio writing series. Uh, it's the PG V1 E3, so it's a volume, Ponder Gander volume one, episode three. Uh, the, <laughs> I was talking before uh, uh, the official coming to air. Yeah, it's going to take a while to do this. So I, I'm taking uh, my first two uh, broadcasts in this series, and uh, I've kind of uncropped on them. I'm just going to leave them over there and, and fetch back. So uh, this is going to take a lot more to really to produce all of this as, as needs to be done. So I'm just going to keep going, and uh, eventually I'll call it all down into those 13 and a half chapters. But for now, I'm going to run with it and... Uh, and going back in uh, to the to the outline and working on the structure of, of it all, so I think a lot more new. I've got uh, some at the bottom of this, which uh, I've published it. And if you'd like to be following around, uh, following along, I'll. Uh, well, I, I can't do it there because I'll open chat. Be right back. Let's see here. I'll have to go fetch it. Come here. Can you, uh, that thing's like, wait, here we go, okay, okay. Give me a second, be patient, please. There it is. That thing's slow, slow. Now I'm going to grab this real quick and we'll throw it back over to the, uh, to the chat room. You guys want to follow along that way. You'll see what I'm seeing in real time, that is.
And there it goes. All right. Thanks, Hawk. Uh, this is the uh, intended to intimidate people. Yeah, there. There's some dirty deeds that are going on for sure. All right. So if you, uh, if y'all in chat want to open up there and uh, follow along, and this will be what will be seen in the video. And uh, some people, I guess, need uh, or like to have. Uh, visual with audio a lot of people can't just listen to somebody ramble on for a couple hours let's see if we can get this our tunication underway so today is uh chapter one part three this is the good the bad and the ugly the states appeal to bring bundy et al back before the bar ass that's a the bar association's uh, fed dis uh federal district court that's there at vegas uh um so, uh, and today, so we're talking about that. They're, they're trying to bring uh, uh, appeal. The prosecution is, wants to appeal the uh, the dismissal the, with prejudice from Judge Gloria Navarro. They want to bring um, Clive and Bundy, uh, two of his sons. Uh, and I guess if they get that one, they'd go back every, after everybody else. And I think there's original uh, 29 or 19 uh, original defendants. There's a lot larger number considering the folks up in uh, Oregon as well from the uh, Malheur uh, refuge occupation there. Um, so anyways, Clive and Bundy, Ryan Bundy, uh, Ammon Bundy, and Ryan Payne were the four uh, in this uh, tier one, which was the second trial, which was actually, I guess, the third trial because they had two before, or three before, and uh, hung juries and, you know, the, the prosecution, they get to go along and uh, I guess it's called jurisdiction shopping. Uh, a lot of times, if uh, they fail in one court, they they can take it to another. Uh, say, for instance, if uh, you you could go end up in federal court from a beating a state charge, and end up on a conspiracy charge. Usually, uh, the uh, feds federal charges generally uh, involve conspiracy. Um, they're dirty, real dirty. They, they manufacture the crimes. Um, they facilitate the crimes. So, also, I'm going to talk to, uh, we're going to, Lavoie Finnecum was killed three years ago tomorrow. He was murdered on, uh, on a lonely stretch of uh, snowy, snow banked highways in, in Oregon on his way to John Day. Um, they were in caravan to go speak to the sheriff there. In John Day County, and so they got uh, ambushed along the way where there was no uh, cell phone service, none of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then when uh, the voice says, "Look, I'm going on to the sheriff," we'll, we'll talk more about that. We're going. You can follow me if you want to. And then he hit the uh, that dead man's roadblock up there, and we're going to see some of that video. And I want to point out some things. This, this was uh, um, this was a setup from the start. I need to go to uh, get this set up. Oh, I didn't even do an opening, so we listened to it earlier. He was going to do an intro, but uh, uh, Elias Alias. I think this is spelled right. And you're going to get his channel. And he's got some, uh, he's keeping a lot very well with some. Uh, what really needs to be done is, you know, of course, archiving all this stuff. And that it is, uh, I, I have it uh, also in my list. But here it is. You'll be able to see it uh, downstream. It's a Lavoie uh, Finnicum, the first shot. So I go back over here and that'll come up. But we're going to be watching that. Let me come back over here. Um, <clears throat> that, uh, that, that opening, the intro, was the uh, Danish National Sympathy Sym Symphony Orchestra. In uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you'll see it here. You listen to it; it's pretty good. Whistlers and musicians and people with uh, voices that are are instruments in themselves. Okay, so let's go. Why was I at the U.S. federal court in Las Vegas at the Bundy Ranch trial? This question came to me from Africa, and uh, I did. Yeah, his uh, his name lives there, and asked me, I, "What's going on?" He he wanted to know what's really going on. What really powers how the world system works and how it shapes the future? 
And to really answer this question, you have to read between the lines and figure out their, their code language, their legalese, and, and keeping yourself out of the danger zone. Uh, so many people have fallen. I mean, we've got uh, people in prison for the rest of their life for uh, trying to do good and for uh, uh, the use of the wrong words that have uh, put them in a claim jurisdiction and they're, they're locked away now. Uh, the list is long, long, long. Uh, of course, uh, Jerry DeLemis and uh, Todd Engel and uh, Greg Burleson and um, Schaefer Cox and uh, Bruce Doucette, man, too bad they, they they rolled you up in that. And they, you know what I seen in that it was other people's action that that uh, people are being held accountable for. And this is uh, uh, unindicted co-conspirators, uh, many that uh, they would might claim that we are, that my, myself among a great many others, possibly hundreds or thousands, just from the Bundy Ranch and the Oregon uh, standoff. So what's really going on? It is. It's uh, it's. It is a big, it is a big consideration for our future here in America, or will we be treated like those in the other occupied countries across the world? Because we are under occupation now. Um, the feds have uh, gone way beyond where they're supposed to be in their powers. Now I know that uh, some of the uh, detractors would uh, have some to say against that. I don't understand how you would say you guys are bad, but then other people that are trying to do the same thing that just have to be on the other side of the political spectrum, it's okay. I mean, left and right is wrong, right down the middle. Uh, is the truth written? Uh, I, I think a couple of people might remember this, and I'll see if I can say it again. I, I took some of these words of my own, and I pulled a couple of other uh, writers in here, so this is a paraphrase plagiarist publication of this is the truth written painted like a picture hanging on the wall a mirror mirror tell it all tell me how tell me now found shattered dying the decay lying raging in the light torn lovelorn lost ne'er to go gently ere the good night and all flesh is as grass that withers and all the glory of man is the flowers of the field that fade away. Some people might figure, well, I pulled a little bit of that out, but a good portion of that was me originally and adapting. So last January, U.S. Uh, District Chief uh, Judge Gloria Navarro threw out the charges after finding prosecutors had withheld evidence from the defense in their case against Mr. Bundy, his sons Ammon and Ryan, and Ryan Payne. She dismissed the case with prejudice, meaning that the defendants cannot be tried again on the felony weapons and conspiracy charges from the armed 2014 standoff over uh, grazing fees with the Bureau of Land Management in Bunkerville, Nevada. Uh, I've uh, a couple of this here I've uh, linked. So the uh, this, this first one I've uh, had a little some edit there to make it current. Federal judge rebuked prosecutors for uh, flagrant misconduct and uh, that link is it going to open click it's not going to open what maybe i got to do a left click copy link see this is why i don't like firefox so well oh got it really let me try the next one that one worked wonder why the first one didn't that was for our uh RLO, the realliberty.org that I uh, copied and linked there, Grimner, and it didn't uh, open on the click. So, But here is, uh, I think this one's from Washington Post. Now federal uh, prosecutors plan to appeal their demoralizing defeat in the Nevada standoff trial. White, she is the uh, uh, assistant U.S. Uh, attorney for Nevada, assured the court that the appeal would be filed by February 6th after asking for a 14-day extension. So they've had years, 2014 here, we're, we're coming up on uh, five years since the uh, uh, the raid, and, and far more than that, over near and probably 30 years that uh, Clive and Bunny's been dealing with the uh, Bureau of Land Management and uh, their attempt to manage him out of business. Let's go look at this from, uh, it is, oh, and I don't have Firefox, I don't have, I got to 
turn the ads off. I'm not used to working this Firefox over here. Let me turn you off so I can look. And then they're going to want money from me. Probably. Last month I had to uh, pay Washington, the Washington Times. The Times or the Post. I think it was the Times. Yeah. To be able to view their articles. And here it is. You'll be seeing it down below. Let me just go take a look at how this is playing off. Yeah, it's there where it's supposed to be. Good, good, good. Uh, from, from the Washington Times, Cliven Bundy's stunning legal spanking of DOJ has feds scrambling for appeal. You know, Bundy attorney blast decision. That's uh, Larry Clayman in the background. And uh, there's Cliven with the uh, with his hat on and got him a microphone. This was from, this would be at, this picture was taken at uh, the Sheriff's uh, Department out front. Would have been January uh, 10th. He was released on the 8th and uh, uh, a bunch of folks converged. Yeah, there it is, January 10th. And who, who's the, uh, where is he talking about Ron Cavalier? Because he's not there. But anyways, uh, says Morris by Valerie Richardson of the Washington Times, uh, Wednesday, January 23rd, 2019. Federal prosecutors said Wednesday they plan to appeal their demoralizing defeat in the Nevada standoff trial, which saw a federal judge uh, rebuke prosecute, uh, prosecutors for flagrant misconduct and dismiss all charges against the rancher Clive and Bundy and his two sons, also including uh, Ryan Payne, which she didn't list there. So here she is, uh, Elizabeth O. White, Assistant uh, U.S. Attorney for Nevada. She just needs a little more time. I tell you. There's the rest of it. You can uh, see for yourself. I'll close that guy out. And back to the Ponder Gander. <clears throat> Victory. All of us lonely. It ain't a sin to want something better than to shake you in. You don't know how to win if you've never lost before. And to paraphrase, plagiarists heard it said a little like that and more. And trampled by turtles, uh, verse 1, uh, part of that came from. And I have the, the clickable right here uh, button, but I'm not going to include it into our broadcast for the copyright. But anyways, you can, uh, you can go listen to that. So, like, I think uh, Grimner or, or Moose Girl is one turned me on to Trampled by Turtles. And, uh, just the name alone is so, so fitting for this uh, tortoise two-step that we're, we're having out here at the, in the West, the uh, stocking horse hustle. It's all, uh, it's all trick smoke and mirrors, ain't it, Rob? So under, uh, under such an extended benefit of uh, the Bar Association, the bear ass, the terror, the intimidation, and dread, there is no constitutional rights, no inalienable rights, no rights of man, nothing but the insult of being defined and treated as an animal, a property in commerce, a beast of burden. Hal Anthony from behind the woodshed. Thank you, Hal. Need to, uh, if you don't know who Al Anthony is, uh, you need to find out. Come on along uh, Sundays at uh, noon on the left coast out there on the Pacific side of the world at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. It's behind the woodshed. And uh, we'll find some notice in the news. We're, we're being um, we're being led along. Of course, you know, many of you will probably know how the media works. In, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I found out firsthand that they're, uh, they're dirty. Dirty, 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 and so that's that's why it, stepping up to to press on to be the the true press press for the truth to come out. Uh, where uh, this has been very unique. Uh, so many people, uh, citizen journalists or whatever you want to call. So I've coming up here five years, uh, six years, yeah, uh, six years uh, doing radio in May. So uh, I'm still, I wouldn't call myself professional. I'm always bumbling, but uh, I'm doing what uh, what needs to be done is that uh, uh, being that firsthand uh, account to give uh, eyewitness uh, number 303 witness for the Bundys. 
and it's from 2014 and I went to witness and I was continuing to witness when they removed me from the uh, the courtroom being on the exclusionary list as a witness so I, I was able to be in on some of the exculpatory hearings going on and this and that but uh, there's other people that uh, were in there like John Lamb and uh, Kelly Stewart uh, um, that were doing the the broadcast or the live feeds and had all the great information and we had great writers uh, uh, Terry from up at the Roseburg Beacon in Oregon and Sherry Uvalli and we got uh, um, well there, there's some good I, I probably should have the list in front of me for uh, leaving anybody else out uh, matters how you stand thank Doug thanks uh, Doug, Doug Knowles matters how you stand uh, he and Sherry are the absolute best in the uh, for the all alternate media. Uh, well, let's just call us ourselves press. I think media has a little dirty little saying or sound to it. Certainly leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Now we're gonna scroll on the down along here. We we've got to uh, the ballad of uh, Lavoie Finicum. That's when cowboys stand for freedom. Uh, this is from Jordan Page. Uh, it's copyright 2018. And, uh, I, I went and spent $2 to, today and uh, on the uh, Amazon and purchased the uh, the two songs. And I'm just going to, I think I might just pop this a little bit where it doesn't go too long. Now, there is free sites to listen to this song. You don't have to pay for it. But uh, uh, that, that's the great thing about uh, libertarians you know if you if uh, if I got something and I've got it out there and it's available then you can have it and if you find value then perhaps you'd like to uh, purchase it so I find uh, value so I, I purchased it. it and let's see if I can open this guy here um, next comes the video so that's not an openable either eh? Firefox and Chrome are so different I'm not being able to click on it. That one will. I'm going to copy this. Let's just try it. This, this is uh, Jordan Page's uh, jordanpagemusic.com. And I'll open this other one. I don't know. If, I think we can play a 30 second clip from here, which would be great. Yeah, let me scroll down here. Where you at? That's a good song, War Machine, if you never heard it. He's got some good songs. You guys might like to check it out. So it's not on here, is it? Let me just open another. Where you at? Come here. Right. I'll just take it over here to where I know it's at. And then I would normally be in Chrome. They work so different. They'll take Firefox and Chrome, Spotify, the Ballad of the Lavoie, uh, Finicum right here. And I have my Spotify connected on Chrome through a Facebook connection. So they're going to want me to log in because I'm not on the right one. Maybe not. Here we go. This should be a 30 second of it. The Ballad of Lavoie, Finicum, a Cowboy Stand for Freedom. They're not gonna let me do it <laughs> without being signed in. Uh, I'll tell you what, I just tricked you out. How about that? Y'all won't be able to see it. Well, you can with uh, Ben's. Where you at? I probably got you still open somewhere. My Amazon, is that where it is? Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'll just go to this then. Same address. I'll be signed in this way. How you doing, Ben? How's it looking over there? Oh, good. Oh, that's all right. Good, 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 good. We got uh, some folks over there at the uh, uh, listening or chatting in. Good. Truth, remember. Well, 
well, hi, y'all that are going to listen later and those that are still over there. Howdy, howdy. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna play this. I think it's 30 seconds. No, this is, uh, yeah, let's see, 20, yeah. All right, we're going to play. I'm going to go back to the beginning of it. And I'm going to kill my mic here for a minute. We'll play. So this is, uh, this is of course, for non-commercial use. We're, uh, we're not ripping off nobody. Uh, this is for uh, all them things in the disclaimer of fair use. Let's listen. Oh, kill it. He was a man who loved to walk the land. Turn his cheek, but also take a stand. When his conviction called, he followed what he felt was right. There's no telling just what time will bring. All right, 26 seconds. That's good. Right there. And uh, I'll go back to Firefox for my video. You know, still seeing whatever. Yeah, it was still there. So that's it right there. Uh, go check out Jordan Page. He's on uh, Facebook also. He's got a page there in his uh, 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 public profile as well. Page. So, all right, let me uh, shut this one off. Go back over here in order. Now, that is in honor of uh, Lavoy Finicum, and and uh, Jordan Page is giving, uh, I think, I believe, half of uh, everything that comes into uh, Jeanette Finicum for her wrongful death suit and the attorney's fees and all that stuff incurred uh, in her battle. So, thank you, Jordan. Great guy. Appreciate it. And this is a, now this will require, there's, this is the, the eighth video in a series. They've been created by Kurt Cruz. The previous seven, they're linked here below. Uh, and there, thank you, uh, Elias Alias. So number one is the deadly, deadly roadblock. Two is the foam bullet. Three is the planted gun. Two shots the fbi lied about is four number five is shot with his hands in the air six is courage in the line of fire number seven five minutes of shooting and number eight which is the uh the uh, lavoy finicum the first shot video uh and i do want to i do want to play that so i'm going to click that and so thanks to kurt cruz and to uh, uh elias alias for the video and also you can find the same over on uh, readout news we're gonna we're gonna get down to sherry Duvali, share her link out here a little bit too all right let's try this <clears throat> i i had intended to uh mark this but uh, i I don't think I'll play this whole thing because I got it's too much more. But the FBI and Oregon right State away. Police pulled over Lavoy Finicum on his way to a meeting with the sheriff of Grant County. 60 seconds. After Lavoy stopped, police shot at passenger Ryan Payne as he was holding out his hands to demonstrate he was not a threat and was merely talking with the police. Ultimately, Lavoy was killed with three shots in the back. However, the first shot is extremely important. This first shot dramatically escalated the situation. The circumstances of this shot are important for understanding later events and for understanding the motives of the FBI and Oregon State Police. Ryan Payne turns and he looks and we see this whole string of unmarked vehicles <coughs> and trailers and, and Unmarked vehicles was a little scary for me because this is the, what we had seen in Bunker at the Bundy Ranch. The boy said it's an ambush. No, Ryan said it was an ambush. And so we kept going down the road, but we watched those vehicles, they pulled around behind, and we had a jeep close behind us. And, uh, and the boy looks in the rear of the mirror, and he said, why are they slowing down? Because we could 
see these cars coming out from behind that side road, Snowy Road, and we were a little bit worried about why the Jeep was stopping. We needed to get to John Day. We needed to get to a safety place. We needed to get to the sheriff. And as, as they came up around, that Jeep just stopped, pulled out the side of the road, and, and uh, uh, LaVoy wasn't going to stop. And suddenly, Ryan Payne says, you got to stop, because they were coming upon us. And really reluctantly, LaVoy stopped in the middle of the road, and his leg is bouncing up and down on the brake. I can see it, and he's nervous. And he's saying, we, no, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. As soon as we have a meeting with the Okay, so what we're gonna see here is uh, Lavoy Finnicum is gonna be coming out of the, uh, exiting his truck after the first initial stop and he goes to that, that roadblock. So let's watch that. Sheriff and John Day, so just go ahead and shoot me if that's what you're gonna do. Ryan Payne has just been shot at for no apparent reason, and the police were now placing their laser sights on the back of Lavoie's head, making an implied threat to shoot Lavoie. At this point, Shauna turned on her camera and records Lavoie's response to the police threatening to shoot Lavoie. Shoot me! You shoot me! I'm going to meet the sheriff! The sheriff is waiting no, for us! So uh, you do as you damn well please! Yeah, it's wrong there. That's the, uh, this is the first stop. This is, uh, he's informing them that uh, he's going to the, meet the sheriff and John Day. And they can follow. Y'all can listen to this whole video. Uh, it'll be in the, the blog, in the link. I don't want to come ahead. Oh, this is some very good information right here. Let's see. This is the, uh, this is uh, the speed chart from the first stop to the roadblock. So they gun it. Now, the, the speed limit was uh, 55, and it's since been raised to 55. He uh, accelerated the speeds just over 80. Now, so this is Lavoie's truck, and um, this uh, the top red line right here. This is the uh, the pursuit vehicle, and, and this video talks about that. So it's what they did. They, uh, they came up in, in behind them and pushed them along. You, know, you can hear in the video, I think as Shauna said, uh, they're coming up behind us. And so at this point, you come around, uh, and you're seeing my cursor later, not live, but at this point, he sees the roadblock and starts shutting her down. Now, it, it was set up, and you'll see this, it was set up for him to uh, crash into that so they could uh, open fire. Uh, you'll have to come back and listen to the whole video yourself. I'm just uh, coming through here, parts of it, in highlight. So... Let's push play here. It is about this now time that the officer who is pursuing at 90 miles per hour is gaining fast. At this point, right, right. Ryan and Shauna comment yeah, about the police forward. vehicle that is gaining. This is, I believe he's still talking about the... Uh, I think it's service. Wait up. Yeah, keep watching the phone so if you get any service. I don't have any. I, don't have any I can't yeah, even get Joe Ray. They're coming up fast. Yeah, they are. I got numbers, but I can't call because we have no service. Okay. No mobile network's not available. Do you have numbers for people here in town? Yeah. Hang hey, on. Okay, they're shooting. Hang hey, on. Okay, here. Don't show that again. Go ahead and shoot me. Got it. When he comes in in another video, goes. I have shown so that the roadblock was placed the at the most truck. dangerous location he's, possible, and he starts, when safe uh, locations break. for the roadblock were easily he available he nearby. No, he's not Here the he's FBI out. should have no, placed some type of warning side. to approaching vehicles. That was there really are quick. numerous types back. of signs that are routinely used to warn motorists Run of out in front. Go ahead, shoot me. Trying to get hit. In another video, so I have shown that the roadblock was placed the at the most dangerous location stop. possible for, when know, safe locations for the roadblock were easily the road available road nearby. Uh, they're the taking FBI fire. All right, they've already taken shots. Uh, uh, FBI agent uh, Asteria, um, he got away with uh, lying and, and opening fire, so they're shooting at him already. Now, let me go. Play. Should have placed right, some boom. type of stop. You see that that 
cop running out there into the snowbank. Where? Why would you run in front of the vehicle? Of course, he, he realizes how deep the snow is and it's going to stop the uh, forward uh, progression of the vehicle. And I think he expected just to take it on the shoulder like a football player. And, of course, then he could have got him some uh, disability lay around and suck it up off the taxpayer money. But look at him. He's jumping in front of the vehicle. And at the very last second, he would have been hit had it not been that Lavoie was able to pull just enough to the left a little bit more to avoid him. I'm pushing play again. Warning to Boom. approach. Ah, you didn't quite get it. That's all right. You, you can see it. Let me try this back up. Her. Ten seconds. Most Ten dangerous seconds. location Wait, possible. When it, right safe right locations for the roadblock were like easily available nearby. Look at this on the, uh, the FBI direction. should have placed some type of warning. There. I think I caught it. He was able to pull just enough the last minute to avoid hitting that guy. Uh, you, you'll see Pointing two, to approaching uh, vehicles. There are numerous ahead. types of signs that are routine flashing lights as a warning. Yeah, you, you can't. Now this look at the view back. from the direction that Lavoy approached. I'm probably talking about from the air, there are only two point. lights visible. I'll let it play for a This minute. light will not be visible to Lavoy because the lights are on the side of the truck and not on the top. The cab will block Lavoie's visibility of this light. The photo on the right was taken from this direction. It shows the position of the black truck and of the light gray truck with the flashing lights. Out, this photo verifies together. that the cab hides the light from the far side, and if the, the view is unobstructed, only one flashing light is visible. I realize that there were multiple trucks blocking the road. There's the murder. And the light there. truck against the snow, reducing the visibility of the roadblock. Mainly because we see the light colored trucks against the black road. However, from the road, Lavoie would see these light colored trucks against a white background, and they would not be as visible. From the direction that Lavoie approached, he would have seen the black truck against the black road and the light truck against the snow, reducing the visibility of the roadblock. Also notice that only one truck has its headlights on. When Lavoie came around the curve, okay, he would have initially seen nothing but a single so pair of headlights, which would not alert him that anything was wrong. You'll be able to see it only then. after so close inspection would Lavoie realize that there were multiple trucks blocking the road. According okay, to the police report, the shooting incident occurred 29 minutes before sunset. The video shows low light conditions. You watch the rest. You can see how it was all set up to uh, push him into so they could kill him. And a lot of things happened that they didn't die that day. All of them. Uh, Lavoie got out of the truck. Uh, let me just go ahead and uh, I'll add what I observed in all this. Uh, after the uh, road roadblock and Lavoy gets out, he, he walks, he goes away from the truck, drawing fire away from the truck. Uh, this has been discussed by uh, a few of us, you know, on Twitter over there. And they're saying, well, Lavoy was uh, trying to commit suicide by cop. But, uh, he knew the possibilities in this engagement, what the police would do to him and kill him. And he, he would not be deterred by uh, fear of death. Uh, and then he, he did, I believe it was a sacrifice to draw them. Uh, fire away from the truck, but that didn't last very long because they did open back up on uh, the truck, uh, lethal and non-lethal. Uh, Ryan Bundy was shot through the shoulder. That was probably one of the initial volleys uh, as they were approaching from uh, Steria. That was probably his bullet. Uh, Ryan still has it, I think. I don't believe he's uh, had it removed yet. All right. I'm going to come back over. And if you guys in chat are uh, following along here, um, at the uh, reallibertymedia.com, the uh, Upon Your Gander page. Uh, you can see where I'm at. And later on down in the video, you'll be able to see uh, everything that we was I was seeing and that uh, Ben is seeing. All right, let me come on down here as I read out. We, uh, in this video, uh, Kurt Cruz looks into the fact that Lavoie was murdered while both his hands were in the air and in a, a gesture of compliance and surrender. His hands... Uh, clearly held no weapon, 
Kirk Cruz felt that this video was necessary in light of the fact that the government continues its attempt to justify murdering Lavoie. And uh, you can click this uh, right here. You'll be able to get over and see uh, um, Readout News, their their web, and on Twitter. Sherry Duvalli, thank you for uh, a great place. And become the media. Take back your future. Thanks, Jules, for that. And that carries over to uh, to my WordPress. And here's uh, journalism. I, I took this from a, I forget, he's a mainstream. He said, uh, journalists need defense. And I say journalism, and then I added in parentheses, truth needs defense. And be the media. And there I am, Vinny Online. That's, uh, you know, you can find all the places that, uh, that I be and works I've done. Uh, I, I called in and I spoke with uh, Ammon Bundy yesterday on his broadcast, uh, The Liberty Effect, uh, and with uh, Brian Hyde as producer. Um, uh, and I think that'll probably come out on SoundCloud uh, by Monday. So, anyways, I'll, I'll get into a little bit of what uh, we spoke about, but first, uh, a little of this. Because the media, that, and that was my point, uh, be the media. Uh, James Madison wrote, without uh, popular information or the means of acquiring it, it is but a prologue to a farce or a tragedy, or, her, or perhaps both. <clears throat> it's up to all of us to ensure that this prologue is never written and to fight the true enemy of the people attacks on truth itself. From James Madison, founding fathers understood the importance of journalism. Thomas Jefferson uh, hoped for a republic governed by reason and truth, brought about by the freedom of the press, because the press is the first, the, they are the ones that are first shut up by those who fear the investigation of their actions. Uh, he, re, he reasoned it needed our protection. So there's a, there's the uh, liberty fact that Ammon Bundy uh, from yesterday. What does one, uh, what does one, I'm paraphrasing him, what does one do when the government won't follow the law? This is uh, from the Liberty Effect. Ahmed Bunny, Brian Hyde, one, uh, January 24 of 2019. Um, I, I found this, and it kind of sums up a little bit about, uh, and you can see, uh, you can't listening live, but uh, a lot of little periods. In, and I broke all this stuff, and this is another of uh, my paraphrased plagiarism that's uh, squashed down. And it, and it, and it comes from uh, Alexandre uh, Solshin. Nitsin, so I assume he's a Russian, da? And it says uh, in compressed form, if only it were all so simple to separate and destroy the line dividing good and evil. That passes not through states nor between classes, but through every man's heart. Impossible to expel from the world, impossible to expel from the world. It is in its entirety, I'm sorry, let me try that again. Impossible to expel from the world in its entirety, but it is possible uh, within each of us. And at what point then should one resist? Um, I put all that together December 14th of 2015. And I've come across that. So I brought that in. I thought it was uh, it fit, fit really well with Ammon's question. And Ammon Bundy is the host of the Liberty Effect each Thursday on the Loving Liberty Radio Network. Uh, I host uh, such people as Brian Hyde, uh, Kate Daly, and uh, there's a new guy here. Oh, I forget his name, but I listened to his uh, first show. It's uh, pretty good. Uh, Loving Liberty. So I, I would call uh, libertarian views. best description. Sorry, I was distracted. I had an incoming over there on the side. I guess that sh that'll be in the video. Thank you, uh, Sire. Reeb. A lot of people think he caught by calling a troll or uh, he's been called worse. Uh, I've, I've been engaged with uh, many of these people that are called trolls and I found that uh, many of these people are uh, real people. They have a different ideology than uh, those that uh, might typically be de uh, described as the Bundy supporter. 
uh, they see a different idea. And Hal Anthony really talks effectively to this deception. Um, you know, it looks like people are, you know, wanting to save the land, save the animals, uh, you know, preservation. But it's uh, it's really, really just a hijacking. And I was talking about that a while ago. You know, I, I've kind of feared this, uh, the... Uh, the Roger Stones and the Lucas Oils, uh, these big monies, uh, you know, what? if if we take uh, all this from the federal government and give it over to the state and then they dole it out to, I mean, are we going to be any better off? And so we, we definitely need protections. We need uh, environmental protections in certain sensitive areas. But I, I'm going to come down to the this uh, uh, cattle or the tortoise and the hare hoof and hide the truth. We're, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. The, the cattle uh, actually are a great benefit out in the desert, especially in their browsing. And uh, I'll tell you what will happen here. It, this field out here, there's no, there's nothing grazing on where I'm at right now. So what's happening, it's growing up in briars and uh, uh, small trees. And eventually it would, you know, just be forced over it. It's a big difference here than in the desert, of course. But... Uh, what happens out there in the desert, the, the cattle uh, uh, graze and browse and uh, like trimming back the, the bushes, you know, and then you got uh, much more uh, succulent growth that uh, comes out from the new shoots, more palatable to uh, other animals, wildlife that would normally not be able to, uh, uh, it wouldn't be palatable for them. They wouldn't be able to process it, the, uh, the roughage that a cow can. And then what does the old cow do? He eats it up and poops it out right there on the ground. And then what happens? The old tortoise comes along. You know what? He lacks it. That's right. It's true. Some people might not uh, think that is, but uh, I'll show you in a little bit later on that it is true. Now, I did talk to him, and he said, what would I do? I said, I'll tell you what I did then in, uh, in 2014 and 2017, 2018, as uh, I went to be witness. Yeah. Hawk, I had a, this is my friend, uh, I won't tell his name, he goes by uh, Gooberzilla over here at RLM, he's my friend Hawk, and yeah, a cardboard sign, I meant to pull up a picture to include that, maybe I'll have to go get that, put it in the blog, me and my cardboard sign, but I did, uh, thank you Grimner, he helped me shrink my cardboard sign down into uh, one that you could just hang around your neck with a laminated uh piece of paper that's what I called it a laminated piece of paper I figure my identification and notification is uh, as good as anything that they could give me from the state but uh, I did have to show a uh, what are these uh, national ID thing that they've got tied in Homeland Security to be able to get in a state I mean a federal courthouse to fly uh, you've got to have uh, one of these uh, national uh, IDs now that they're all tied together uh, they're phasing out the state ones uh, you still get a state driver's license ID without all that uh, extra, but uh, it won't do you any good to to move about for for long. Force slow, get people to uh, uh, come along uh, on their own, and and once you get enough people on board, then make it mandatory. Uh, a couple of things I want to address here that uh, was failed. Uh, injustice for the uh, the Bundy et al. And this is the uh, six, Sixth Amendment. It says in all criminal prosecution, the uh, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy trial and a public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been uh, previously ascertained by law and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, and to have a compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Uh, thank you on freedomroad.info, uh, where I pulled that from. Of course, you know, Sixth Amendment's everywhere, but I just want to include... Uh, uh, because they, they were so good enough to share something with me, and I went to check out their site, and that was there, and it was uh, appropriate to go with uh, my content here. <laughs> this comes, uh, well, let's see if, uh, who the first one, see there's a delay, so it'll take a while for me to notice in chat. Let's see who uh, picks up on who this is speaking first.
all our uh, libertarian and anarcho-capitalist, uh, whatever little title you got on yourself, uh, will probably be more closer to get this. Okay, well, here it is. It is manifest, therefore, that the jury must judge and judge of. Let me try it again. It is manif It is manifest, therefore, that the jury must judge of and try the whole case and every part and parcel of the case, free of any dictation or authority on the part of the government. They must judge of the existence of the law, of the true exposition of the law, of the justice of the law, and of the admissibility and weight of all the evidence offered. Otherwise, the government will have everything its own way. The jury will be uh, uh, mere puppets in the hands of the government, and the trial will be, in reality, a trial by the government and not a trial by the country. By such trials, the government will determine its own powers over the people instead of the people's determining their own liberties against the government. And it will be an entire delusion to talk. As for centuries, we have done of this trial by jury as a palladium of liberty and or as any protection to the people against the opposition and tyranny of the government. Has anybody said it? Yeah. So I guess we've got a uh, cardboard sign that's come downstream. What do we got here, cowboy? Hey, thank you. Yep, that's uh, that's our friend Ben. Sound Minds, he's uh, streaming it right now. Uh, duh, I could have told you guys here. What have I done? That's a big duh moment. Yeah, thank you, cowboy. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> so you can actually see what I'm seeing. Yeah, go, 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 go. Stay in chat and open up the uh, YouTube. It is, uh, well, Sound Minds, you find it like that. So anybody know who that was? Who was I talking about? It is manifest, therefore, that the jury must judge of and try the whole case. What happens in these state and federal courts, uh, district courts, uh, anyone? They, they, they've got the rules, and what are the rules for? The rules are in their favor. Definitely in their favor. And um, what they had to go through in this uh, the Bundy Ranch trial, uh, how much they could not, they, they were muted. They were gagged. Um, Brian Payne. They can't say there was a sniper. Why not? There were snipers. And then uh, my conversation to Twitter uh, earlier this morning. I was trying to say that they wasn't. Oh, well, the, they were just on standby to be snipers. But no, um, uh, the uh, the broadcast from uh, Ammon yesterday, I think, uh, is where there's a lot of information there. Uh, straight from the court's records that, uh, that this... Uh, stuff that was had been previously hidden that they finally got turned over and everybody knew from 2014 we all knew there were snipers we had pictures of them then we knew there was listening devices uh, it, none of this was a secret but somehow by the power of the prosecution they can uh, exclude it and yeah uh, Myrie and, and Sheese and Ahmed uh, and I think uh, Navarro uh, certainly in collusion and it just got so bad she couldn't she couldn't cover it up anymore um, and, it, and it had to uh, she had to uh, dump it trying to save herself so yeah these guys were definitely covering up on purpose she she said as much let me uh, I didn't grab my notebook <clears throat> let's see here we got a few pages I ain't even looked at yet and I wrote uh, so this is a uh, this is two or three different broadcasts. I've never run through it. Through. It's from uh, Loving Liberty. This is a Brian Hyde's uh, radio. So the Brian Hyde Show. Uh, a few, let's see, some, I, I didn't put the date on here, but one show he's talking about uh, meeting a homeless man and somebody was stealing his stuff and he says, just let them have it. Maybe they need it more than me. Give it away. And should college be free? So if you want to search that out, uh, Brian is a, very well spoken, highly intelligent, and uh, somebody that uh, I can look up to and say, yeah, I'd like to be like that guy right there. Him and Ammon uh, are a lot alike. In another broadcast, uh, I was going to open this up, and I didn't. 
There ought to be a law. I actually should. Can I find it? I'm not. I'm going to. Doggone it. This Firefox gets me. I'm going to have to go to uh, Chrome to get into it. I'm going to go to uh, SoundCloud and the Brian Hyde Show. And the, what was the date? This was uh, the second hour of. Uh, didn't I write the date down here? Surely I did. Surely I didn't. Awesome things. Yeah, there's a. Really, I ran it out for like five minutes and then I jumped back in. My notes Deep here to down, play. We all know that freedom and liberty matter. So here, where we discuss why they you're, matter. you won't be able to see this, this in my video, but you are Brian seeing Hyde. it on Sound Minds as they're streaming live right now. I'm over here at uh, the SoundCloud dot uh, dot the I'm sorry SoundCloud dot com. This is a it's still listing. They're going to work this out. The Joe Carey show sets the Brian Hyde shows the the long title cross there. Now let me see. Uh, some really good broadcasts, and these are going back. Uh, these are several I've listened to. Hello there. Uh, this Welcome one I back, recommend Brian very Hyde. highly. Uh, Loving Welcome Liberty with Brian Hyde and self-defense. That's got a uh, knowing bring a little note of hope in a lot of people's it. hearts and minds. Knowing when yeah, to act. Uh, Cover yourself. Insight. If somebody breaks and in your house and you kill them, you, you may today. still be. Um, uh, I wanted to, to bring up something. Manslaughter, murder, yesterday, and and I wanted to just touch on this because. Shoot them and There's drag them in the house. Come up some and, of the and things I know, he talked uh, about. Mo's not the only one who there. asked this question. So and, we've got Brian and I've heard Hyde plenty of other people say this. Here's the Peterson. question: for you. There's Should a, there's a, college he's got some be good free? Yes, there is some very sound minds. Now I'm going to ask you first of all: well, What is your gut reaction? Ah, uh, let's to, see if I can find. Should I go in the right direction? I am going to December. I mean, most of us would agree that education and learning are desirable things, right? I mean, isn't it supposed to make us better? Uh, more well-rounded people, um, more productive, 17th, able to get out and, and, and be a part of society that pulls our own weight. And, and I, I'm not trying to disparage yeah. you know, those who are okay. either undereducated or for whatever reason, you know, um, and I would have hit life those who, who find sure. themselves dependent upon I think it was a 17th. You know, either the dole or the down. kindness of strangers. So I'm going to have to skip that. I'm going to well, come back to that because I don't want to spend the time looking for it. Even among the I'll, I'll bring that back into and, and, and what I mean uh, by this next is uh, um, broadcast. mental illness so, often plays a, a uh, during the show, but uh, in homelessness, uh, Ammon asked more so uh, than I think a lot of us uh, might might think. What do people do when government won't follow the law? Basis, uh, they probably wouldn't know. He that. says that Navarro Ask certainly wasn't a friend. You know, and uh, he went on to say that there's just too much uh, for glory that the she had to cut system, ties. And they'll tell you, that, uh, oh yeah, yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the homeless people. Her words were grossly shocking because and, there, there were mental uh, health challenges that are, that are a part of it. We, we um, find I, it. I personally uh, met a couple of people the time. It's the, who um, it's the I know normal. This isn't a pejorative term to say. You know, this, uh, they they were uh, hobos. They rode the trains. They carried everything in the world to you know, um, in a plastic bag or I an app or something know. like that. Yeah, we got an hour. And I, I was shocked that a couple of them were to, actually to quite well in, educated. Uh, I mean, we're talking like you know, this one guy who was an engineer. I forget the what the other guy had done, but he, he was an educated uh, individual. I really don't get this and, and exactly cases, set without my splitter. I can't hear what's playing and, it wasn't just, and having this mic. I guess I could switch or something like that. They headset, actually made a conscious didn't want to do decision that to so turn their backs I, and, and hey, walk away as we go. from society. Let me look general. over and chat. Anybody say anything? And I know for a lot of us that, that's unthinkable. What? Leave the comfort of a warm shower and a Killing soft ducks. couch and a TV. And Goob did say something about my cardboard and, sign. You know, and cold beer in the fridge. Uh, or said somewhere be, to go. To, to do what? Well, in you know, front, one thing they were seeing a good too. portion of the country. Um, something else that impressed ah, me. Uh, yeah, I'm making the squirrel. case here for why being homeless may actually be not such a bad um, thing. Um, Grammy Murray, one of those, she's one on, of the guys she's on I was talking to, this is in Pocatello, Central Idaho. Tonight. It's a big train oh, town, and I, I live not too far from Grimner the hump yard where they would connect the train cars. And so there were a lot of transients who would come through and hitched a ride on the train. So this guy is coming through there, and I'm talking with him. He he just struck up a conversation uh, with we'll my wife and, and with me All right, let's see, we're on at. the street. And he had left his Okay, his so the prosecutor, I was talking about this, prosecution won't just, allow certain you know, evidence yards before the jury. Next to you should have seen how that went. And I, I mean, kids come the jury was uh, and, and start going through courtroom far less his than belongings. The, uh, and they were and outside. Course, you know, as I'm talking to the guy, he's intelligent. He's telling me, no, this is my choice. I didn't want him to know something different. Why would tired of you know the corporate any court, any judge, any prosecutor, I was tired of wearing a tie to work every day. And exclude any information. I think. 
even if it doesn't apply as they might about uh, claim, it should be allowed. So I look over and if I, I wanted to, starting to go through let's say I was uh, charged like, with, uh, oh, you know, I'm going to go over there uh, and I, I'm going to, you know, give him a piece of my mind. And he's jaywalking. He goes, just relax, relax. Out here in the country. It's just stuff. It's like, you didn't go I can always get more. Through the cross and the crosswalk. And I thought, you know, Ba-dee-da. for a guy who really didn't own And I said, well, I... I think I had in to fact, everything cross could, right here. Everything he owned out in the of, world, uh, he could carry with him. Let's just go back in, to in that, that We're in the pack. city, and I get a ticket from a cop for jaywalking because I felt like it was than, important than, than even I do. Uh, that, uh, and I don't want to get think across I have the street without having to go down. Attitude or maybe I was trying to catch a bus. Maybe truth, truth be told, somebody was being robbed, and maybe I ran over to help for any number of reasons. My point here is just simply, you know, a lot you know, of people are idiots. Don't uh, uh, don't judge every book by its cover. Can't, if you uh, see a person who's homeless, can't let them um, cross some the of them may on actually own. be there because That's of circumstances. That's the world we live in. Maybe they're own doing. Maybe somebody else is I need to doing. go on back over. But there are some the people who will box. actively choose to just uh, walk away. Um, we'll from come back on the, what we call that normal again. life. Win at all costs. That's even that's what it is. Sometimes that's their some pretty serious baggage. Yeah, for sure. That's how they do it. So I did. I missed a little bit of the story, but. I mean, that the, I, uh, I kind of align with the guy based on what I heard about him or heard what you say. Okay, they so uh, would that, you like to join they were denying even that the FBI was involved. Free. So that's brought out. That was some more okay. lies. The, M- the FBI was uh, involved. As a matter of fact, their uh, threat, threat assessment said that they didn't oh, have yeah. to worry about provoking it. Material and, and, violence. and that's exactly what So uh, also, she said that there was a universal sense of justice that had been violated. It asks the question, should college be Flagrant, misconduct, substantial... Uh, prejudice he met a, a student and the win at all the cost. question in his class should that's, college uh, be free and he says that's now, how they work this that is out. early on in the school year <clears throat> he wasn't even sure and he said she also said they will politics uh, fail to disclose to myself when i'm in the classroom uh, uh, but he said as he met documents that student, and, and he said that's a really you know good they kid, did they had uh, uh, polite like, engaging uh, a very solid student valuable maybe a thumb drive file or something like that it was also very clear this is a young man i think there was a total of four Terabytes and of information he, he altogether. This young man asked from, him, well, should uh, college evidence be from free? the uh, prosecution? And so they he would hide to, uh, stuff like that was relevant and they'd put it off in, says, as a say, like uh, uh, maybe American a financial history. report of uh, generally expenditures for, uh, class for lunch for the month or whatever. And they would uh, the co- on they put stuff in. College for their general now, that's that's deception. Reason being, college is expensive. I mean, you were you've been in school since I have. With the assistant U.S. attorney showed bad faith. Have any two or three hundred dollar textbooks? He did. He was guilty of withholding evidence. Older edition and still. In yeah. the beginning, it was claimed that were really some about to use uh, 1, thousand pages you, with him. You buy one that is smart. Uh, containing uh, right. Brady and Giglio violations right. right. turned out to be and much. And they had the much, same instructor much, too, much, so you know much what's more coming. Than that. Uh, well, students. She went on to say he did not. In this meet case, community college. Uh, he said the responsibility. Uh, they they were choosing community college because college is expensive, and they were looking for a less expensive route. To their degree. Okay, yeah. He says, and okay, so Emma, so he says, you know, they, 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 these people, these that, that they committed crimes, they, they, were they, they, were they, they were trying to take from mom these dad. people's Classes lives. Classes do tend to be larger in community Shut college than oh, private dang, four-year Grimmer. schools. And four years Where's in one place playing? can better cement lifelong friendships. But four-year residential private colleges uh, are anything but cheap. Oops. And he says then there are the large universities where introductory survey classes essentially are turned over to teaching assistants. Dang it. I see what happened. Thank you, Grimner. Thanks, Chloe. I'll see uh, Chloe the hippie. Well, I hope that didn't ruin it. I had another player going on the dog on it. When I opened up the SoundCloud, it started playing. Didn't realize it, so there it is. Uh, let me back where I'm at. Um, ba-boom. Yep, that the, the violations and that the state did not meet its responsibility and that uh, Emma was talking about how the, these criminals, these prosecutors and uh, agents that uh, were committing these crimes, and uh, anywhere from uh, civil uh, civil right violations, you've got criminal, you've got procedural, and uh, you know agency rules. All of this stuff was being violated. And like I said, listen uh, when the uh, the 24th of the January episode of uh, Loving Liberty. I'm mean, sorry, the Liberty Effect comes out, and uh, Ammon lists off uh, all that pretty well. <laughs> it's long, 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 long. All right, so I've come to the end of that, and these notes are for Mama Bear, but I'll I'll, uh, I'll come back to that, and we're gonna 
I'm gonna pretty much abbreviate that. I don't think I was done with those notes, but I sent them away anyways. Um, get them. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Yeah, Mama Bear. We'll get to her in a little bit. <clears throat> she, uh, well, uh, we'll get to her. All right, the stalking horse rides again. The BLM was set on killing what it could. These uh, governments rustling hustle of the West and the last rancher standing. That is uh, from me, the stalking horse. That's a tricky little guy right there. The dog and pony show. Here's uh, the WordPress, the uh, last rancher standing from me, October November 15th to 2017 and uh, I'm uh, only a little bit better at writing than I was so this is all without edit I'll I'll be interested to come back through and see uh, if I can rewrite better as I pull all this together so uh, for me this is who led the raid on the Bundy Ranch and what kind of management Clive and Bundy didn't want a contract with the stocking horse rides again yes it does the tortoise two-step was a tune set for the Bundy Ranch raid. First they came for the tortoises and then the horses. Well, maybe they came for the farmers and then the rancher. Who are they coming for next? Who is next? Why nobody died in Bunkerville, in Nevada in 2014? It is because of all those that came that day and stood in the gap. Who, what, when, and where, and why, and how? Right in order. Please tell the tell the whole truth, please, Mr. Myrie. I say, U.S. D.C. Court Dist, uh, District Court of Nevada, A.U.S.A. He was yeah, he got let go. <clears throat> Continuing. So this is uh yeah this that's why I said first they came for the tortoise and then then for the horse. So they they did, euthanized I forget how many tortoises that they had rounded up. Yeah, big tortoise roundup, yeehaw. And they had killed them. <laughs> so they're trying to save tortoises and then they kill them. And here's a here's a similar action. I think this came. Well, no, I guess that's from Maxine. Uh, BLM calls for shooting 90,000 healthy wild horses. On Thursday, the National Wild, wild Horse and Burrow Advisory Board recklessly voted to approve recommendations that call on the Bureau of Land Management to, yep, Shoot the horse. Shoot him. From Maxine uh, Whipple. Uh, I think this is actually bleeding in there. Anyways, I'll go. Go ahead and pass. So I'm done with that. Show that. <clears throat> Back to the Ponder Gander page. Standing up for freedom. Whatever it takes. The Bundy Ranch uh, trial report. This is uh, from Wendy uh and Holly, thank you guys. Uh, this was uh, one of my earlier videos uh, at the uh, court out for uh, giving updates of what's going on inside the co courtroom. And this was the day that uh, Ryan Bundy's opening statements with the uh, history behind the why in the Bundy Ranch. And why did they have to stand? Well, some decades they were coming to put them off the land. You think 20 years had been enough time to do it to you know, wait them out? Let, uh, let them fall off to attrition. and uh, But unfortunately for uh, the federal government, the Bundys raise uh, hardworking uh, folks that aren't scared to, to stay out there on the land. You think you think Clive and Bundy's are, uh, this wealthy rancher, this millionaire rancher, that's what they call him. It's funny. Uh, yeah, you can find out. He's just a simple man. So the setup for the takedown, the stalking horse, and the tortoise two-step, and the Bundy Ranch raid, government aggression and usurpation, whatever it takes. Is that a, a threat or determination? Because they tried to use that, whatever it takes. They said, well, you know, what are you willing to do? Whatever it takes. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Uh, does that imply a threat? No, I, I say determination. Um, forced out, rights versus privilege. And homestead, water, and grazing rights. That's what we're, we're looking at. Um, things that are owned, property. Um, and that's all been changed, of course, in their definition. No moo in 92 and cattle free by 93, they say. Uh, the cattle gather costs some $6 million and over $100 million. And I heard a much higher uh, number than that later on. They say here, 100 
$1.5 million for the trial. So thanks again, Wendy and Holly. Uh, I'll pop it open just so uh, we'll take a licky see. And you can see a nine-minute video. It's in the uh, Real Liberty Media YouTube channel. You ready? Okay, we are ready. Vince Easley, Real Liberty Media. And we have an update from this morning. And today is the... Uh, Y'all come check it out. Hi, Wendy. And you're not... If, well, if you're over there with sound, mind you, you've seen it. Uh, Ryan Bundy's opening statements. And um, two more of what I just said there. <clears throat> so, this, I've got a long string of videos here that cut to clips, and without having uh, the ability to uh, listen at the same time it's playing in real time, I think I'm going to probably have to leave these off to you, the listener, to open yourself. I'll just pop them open and, uh, and read them, a couple of them, just so we can see them. Uh, bad faith and re repercussions. Uh, there's nothing that guarantees the conviction of an innocent man more than bad lawyers. Uh, there's some quoting I've done from this video, and it's uh, let's just open it up. Uh, also, the check and balance on prosecution, prosecutorial misconduct, whereby a law for the public defender to go by, go before the grand jury and to indict prosecutors. This was something that was suggested by somebody in the audience, audience to indict uh Prosecutors, police officers, judges, public and public officials is uh, edited for clarity. It's, uh, I believe that was a caller, yeah, uh, what participant there? Um, to uh, then we have egregious, egregious in, intentional. What happened? Uh, in, egregious e intentional misconduct, and what it is is a free pass for the prosecution. Oh, there you go. I see what you're doing. You did it. <laughs> That's uh, that's been. I say, hey, my my mouse is running around my cursor. Egregious uh, international misconduct. Free pass for the prosecution, A.K.A. the role of the advocate, and polluting the jury pool. And one ha one uh, one way how the state sets public opinion is all uh, in that. But I will go ahead and just to open this video so we can have it to see. That's the short of it. And uh, they're all marked in this video to open up in the, the appropriate time stamp uh, area. Where like it, you said, can plainly it. see uh, that there's some kind of malice Jeez. or bad intent. How can we not bring people up on bar charges? And right. How can so we not this is, allow uh, kill lawyers? It. This is uh, prosecutorial ethics uh, and the right to a fair trial, the role of the Brady Rule, session uh, three. This is from uh, the case for Western uh, Reserve University School of Law. January 26th of 2007. There's speaker uh, <clears throat> Barry Sheck, the director of the Innocent Project, and is presented by, as I said, the case Western Re uh, Reserve Law Review. Uh, summary, the, uh, the, it is the Innocent Project in the criminal, um, I guess I should read the whole thing, the, the Law Review Symposium, the Innocence Project in the criminal justice system. <clears throat> Barry uh, is a professor of law at the uh, Benjamin uh, Inn Cardoza School of Law in New, New York City, where he has served for more than 27 years and is the co-director of the Innocence Project. He is the emeritus uh, director of uh, the clinical education, co-director of the trial advocacy programs, and the Jacob Berm Center for the Study of Law and Ethics. Uh, Professor Sheck uh, received his uh, undergraduate degree from Yale University in 71 and his JD from Bolt Hall School of Law. Yeah, so there's the rest of it. Uh, just a little, lot to read there. It is, a, it is a, of course, these guys are lawyers and judges and all that, but it is a very, uh, very good uh, video to for learning. And that's why, you know, I'm not a, certainly not a lawyer. You don't ever want to be, but got to understand how this stuff works and to avoid uh, getting yourself caught up in it. All right, we'll come on to a, um, I believe this is a second video. I'm going to click it here and see, or is this the same one? I think it's different. <clears throat> 
pretty sure. Let me see. Yeah, it is. This is uh, prosecutors run amok. I have. Uh, I'll come back go over there in a minute. And this uh, from the Federalist Society, and they say the uh, Supreme Court has uh, instructed in clear terms that the duty of the federal prosecutor in a criminal prosecution is not that it shall win a case, but that justice shall be done. Uh, Berger versus United States, 295 U.S. point seven eight um, eight eight nineteen thirty five. 1935. The, the news page, pages were uh, filled with the examples of federal prosecutorial overreach. Uh, in its term just ended, the Supreme Court reversed six of seven criminal convictions that uh, that reached it. That's a lot of getting overturned. You imagine how many didn't reach the uh, the court to be overturned? It's true today, too. Maybe not uh, 9 out of 10, but uh, I'm going to say probably maybe 9 out of 10. Yeah, I said that. You can see more here. It'll be in the link. And as I said, this uh, I, I cut to a few different spots in here, which is uh, adjudicated civil and administrative matters versus uh, prosecution in broad generalized regulatory uh, schemes by Congress, uh, dismiss indictments for failure to prove the crime, ethical corruption, a cadre of prosecutors. Take it or leave it. I had the uh, fair dinkum, but I pulled it out of there. I had original posting and <laughs> I added that. Fair dinkum. Fair trade, you know, that's that's what they're uh, insinuating. And then, uh, oh, the funny lawyers. Um, what did, What was his joke? I think it was something about um, well, we got to get paid, you know. Untainted assets, lawyer jokes. Yeah, you can't go, that's what I think it was. You can't go season all their at civil forfeiture and stuff because they've got to be able to have some money to pay the defense lawyer. And oh, everybody thought that was so funny. Absolute immunity for prosecutors. Seems like it is, isn't it? Thanks, Cowboy Tech. I took this, uh, and uh, put it up there with uh, thanks to you. What does it say? It's a picture here or meme from Milton Friedman. <clears throat> Excuse me. Government has three primary functions. It should provide for military defense of the nation. It should enforce contracts between individuals. It should protect citizens from crimes against themselves or their property. When government when government, in pursuit of good intention, tries to rearrange the economy, legislate morality, or help uh, special interests, the cost comes in inefficiency, lack of motivation, and loss of freedom. Government should be a referee, not an active player. Well, that's what they're supposed to be, but uh, they they are the active player. They're the, uh, they're the ones uh, in control, uh, unfairly. Very, very unfairly. <clears throat> this is uh, this is a video. It's on uh, Facebook. Uh, it's a federal court system closure that uh, the Lavoie Finnicum wrongful death suit uh, was delayed amidst this uh, government shutdown. Uh, it will be there included in the broadcast link. <clears throat> I don't need a drink. Just a and then we're going to move to the, the tortoise. Since he's so slow, we can take our time, right? <clears throat> I think I really actually need a minute. Let me uh, let me let you guys listen to the the, the lawyer joke, and I'll uh, mute my mic and <clears throat> set myself up here. What do I need to do? Open sesame. Um, and like I said, I can't hear it, so I forget when to stop for the entirety. It's not very long, but. There it is. It's coming and coming, and as soon as it plays, I'll mute his mic and be right Defendant's around. money to pay his lawyer is really bad policy. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <with> you. <laughs> well, so I, I so there's the asset, there's the issue about whether or not you're you know depriving the defendant of the right to retain counsel of choice. The Louise case is going to be argued next month in front of the Supreme Court about the untainted assets. But the, I think the, the the thrust of your question was whether or not criminal defense attorneys are being targeted for prosecution. And I 
you know, there obviously there are some examples of that. The mm -hmm. Lynn Stewart uh, was defending Abdul Rahman was prosecuted and convicted, but that's really rare. Even the case that you referred to, the Dapper Don case, John Gotti, as I recall, certainly his defense counsel, longtime defense counsel, he wasn't indicted. He was mm -hmm. conflicted out because he was on various tapes engaging in conversations that arguably extended beyond giving legal advice and might well have subjected him to criminal prosecution, but he was not, in fact, prosecuted. So I think that, that conflicting out counsel, uh, maybe prosecutors are being more, you know, more aggressive, maybe they're not, maybe they're behaving man. inappropriately. I feel a lot better about not. this but one Those are certain issues that are litigated before judges, and in terms of targeting defense counsel for criminal prosecution, Maybe there's something going out there in the hinterlands that I'm missing, but I haven't seen much evidence of that. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh -huh. uh, yes, Paul Kamen, our D.C. attorney, and also representing Randy Sowers, uh, the farmer whose oh. farmer's market proceeds were seized by the government. Uh, Justice Blackwell, you began with a quote from Attorney General Jackson at his conference to the United States Attorneys, and he also said, uh, I'd like to quote, oh, good, good. the prosecutor has more control over life, liberty, and reputation than any other person in America. His discretion is tremendous, and any prosecutor who risks his day-to-day -day professional name for fair dealing to build up statistics of success has a perverted sense of practical values as well as defects of character. He should select the cases for prosecution in which the offense is the most flagrant, the public harm the greatest, and the proof most certain. And yet, as John uh, Malcolm said, we've got <coughs> cases like Gates where they're using Sarbanes-Oxley to throw the fish over sea, uh, in the water. Uh, the U.S. <coughs> versus Clay Dude, case pending in the 11th Circuit, where the government took a contract dispute under Medicaid and made that into a criminal case that was argued that. last month and was the subject of two Federal Society teleform calls uh, that John and John, Jack Park and I participated in, and also a WLF legal backgrounder. But my question is this: How can we um, get the prosecutors? Uh, and George, you kind of mentioned this in terms of supervision to comply with their own use attorney's manual that says before you begin criminal prosecution, you should consider alternative civil right and administrative remedies and whether the state can. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Ah. So that was that. I don't know uh, how much, uh, I'm pretty sure you heard the lawyer joke. They thought it was real funny to take people's money. Leave them enough to pay us. Hey, we're all on the same side, right? I'll work for the Bar Association. Uh-huh. Okay, so here I am going back down. Yes, yes, yes. We're at the, the tortoise and the hare, hoof, and hide the truth. That's uh, that's how I kind of cut it in here. It's the uh, desert tortoise in relation to cattle grazing. And that's from uh, Vernon Bostick, uh, and it is, uh, covers some historical evidence of over uh, three year, 300 years of uh, tortoise and uh, uh, cattle cohabitation. And, you know, see the early history. Uh, this other one, I'm definitely going to have to, uh, <laughs> to I'm going to go here first, but we're going to, after that, we're going to go to this so-called uh, best science expert that doesn't even know that cattle have cloven hooves. Incredible. And this guy, oh, just wait till you see. But first, let's go to the tortoise. <clears throat> we got, we're going to talk about this. It's a pretty long read. I had intended on reading it all, and I may or may not. Waiting for it, waiting for it. Uh, yeah, I know, I, my, my, uh, was uh, choppy the last one. They did like go low and high, very bad audio. So I'm running two, uh, I'm running the, uh, um, Audacity record and also the, uh, this is called the, the video recording at the same time, too, in the uh, OBS. So that's all recording. And so trying to just make sure I got some extra files to work with. And <clears throat> So anyways, this is the tortoise, uh, desert tortoise in relation to cattle grazing. Uh, early history, the uh, desert tortoise has an imp... I got something playing, or is that somebody? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm hearing you in my... <laughs> Never mind, I'm good. Okay. So the desert tortoise has inhabited the Mojave and Sonoran deserts in the southwestern United States and Mexico for thousands of years. For the past three or four hundred, uh, three or four centuries, that is, the desert tortoise has shared its habitat in Mexico and California with cattle. This is no, uh, 
this is no information on tortoise ab I'm sorry there is no information on tortoise abundance in pioneer days but we do have good information on cattle abundance and range conditions a century ago uh, the buildup of uh, buildup in livestock numbers in the 1870s and 80s which is well documented in Arizona that's uh, Griffiths uh, 1901 Thornbearer 1910 that, that, that occurred all over the Western Range. Uh, Stoddard and Smith 1955 estimated that about 85% of livestock on the range perished in the late 1880s. We know that uh, that desert tortoises survived this severe overgrazing because they did not come become extinct. <clears throat> Makes sense. World War I, uh, World War One encouraged a second buildup in range uh, livestock numbers. Beef sold at a high it sold at high prices and the range was free. Universal overgrazing was the inevitable result. The decade of the 30s was ushered in by the severest drought of record. In addition to peak numbers of livestock, the western range was plagued by hordes of rabbits, rodents, and grasshoppers. That's from uh, Roar Heise and uh, Taylor, 1933. Uh, I believe these, uh, these are is the build-up to the uh, Taylor Grazing uh, Act, uh, this Taylor here, uh, author. <clears throat> so uh, ranchers burned the spines off cactus in an attempt to save their cattle from starvation. Uh, death losses from starvation and an invading uh, poisonous plants were severe. The destruction of the Western Range is documented in the uh, Senate document 199, U.S. Forest Service, 1930. <clears throat> in in uh, let me scroll a little bit here. <clears throat> in view of the concern expressed by some people for the past 10 years, it is amazing that any tortoise survived the many years of unregulated livestock grazing that preceded uh, that preceded enactment of the Taylor Grazing Act of 1934. From a single census in a single year, uh, Schneider, 1980, drew the following conclusions. Number one, that the population is declining rapidly towards extinction, that overgrazing by cows is responsible. Three, the desert tortoise should be listed as endangered. Four, that their habits should be closed to grazing uh, Schneider summed up in his report with this statement, the outlook for the future of the species, the desert tortoise, in the state, Arizona, appears grim. Not our grim. Grim's great. Uh, little inside joke for our chatters. Uh, more timer in Schneider, 1983, uh, since a, a desert tortoise population with the highest density known in uh, Nevada. Maybe I should try reading that again. <laughs> okay, the highest density in Nevada. That the data showed a 45% increase in population over a census made five years before. Scrolling back up before uh, another biologist. Okay, five years before another biologist. Nonetheless, nevertheless. Uh, more timer recommended that this habitat be closed to cattle grazing for 15 years so the desert population could recover. He summed up his report with this statement. Habitat and wildlife managers must determine if livestock grazing operations can coexist with tortoise and other wildlife on the Mojave Desert biome. <clears throat> now we're to the uh, Taylor Grazing Act of uh, 1934 and it uh, ended the free-for-all get all you can while you can uncontrolled grazing which had destroyed the range resources on the public domain there's there's no doubt about that I mean, the uh, cheap grass there's all kinds of invasive species uh, some is edible at other times of years and some are not I, I've got to wonder the gypsum weed I wonder if that was uh, native to the west and I made a mistake I said the uh, uh, the sagebrush at one time, uh, and I was meaning to say the tumbleweed, the, the Russian thistle, it's not native to the West. It's so iconic, right? Hey, what's happening? When I do, I was... it. I got something new open over here. Get back. My finger was wandering. Um... And I lost my place. 
<laughs> All right, I'll just come back over here to the Taylor. Uh, yeah, grazing that. Um. So sorry about that. So 50% roughly was uh, made in reductions in the amount of livestock use permitted. Permitted use today is only about 10% of the livestock use that occurred during the free range days. If the conservative uh, grazing management that is being practiced today has, uh, has, hold on. <clears throat> I had to reach the other computer for it to shut down. No, I've lost myself again. <laughs> Where am I? Okay, so let me start here. If the conservative grazing management that is being practiced today has such a detrimental impact on desert tortoise populations, how could the species have survived through all those years of uncontrolled livestock grazing? <clears throat> Dr. Kristen Berry interviewed uh, all the longtime residents in the Mojave and Sonoran deserts she could find and questioned them about the abundance of desert tortoises years ago. From the following quotation is uh, from Dr. Barry's Tortoises for Tomorrow. Long time desert residences, uh, residents in California noticed extraordinary densities in the early 30s that could have been as high as 2,000, 2,000 tortoises per square, per, per square mile. 2,000, that's a lot. That's a lot of tortoises. <clears throat> a torta, turtles. A turtle is a tortoise, but I, I guess we need to be specific. It's not a turpin, but a turtle is a tortoise, or a tortoise is a turtle, and a turpin is a turtle, and all that. <clears throat> but anyways, it's a, uh, it's a turtle. It's a turtle it walks around. You know, everybody knows about the turtle. Turtle, the tortoise in the hair, that is. <clears throat> so the evidence that uh, Dr. Barry accumulated is ample to support our conclusion. But I will review only uh, one interview. A member of a survey party in Antelope Valley in 1933 saw over 100 tortoises in one place at one time. He told Dr. Berry that tortoises were everywhere, all over the ground. A density of 2,000 tortoises per square mile is three tortoises per acre. The year 1933 was the third year of the Great Drought and the culmination of years of overgrazing by livestock. Let's assume that forage production was 90 pounds per acre. Uh, on an overgrazed desert range in, in a drought year, this is a, this is a liberal estimate. <clears throat> Cattle were starving. It says uh, we we can uh, we can assume that they graze the range as closely as possible. This means that cattle would have uh, consumed about 90% of the forage produced uh, if there were. Uh, were any sheep on the range for used by livestock? Getting covered over there. Hi, uh, Oregon Public Broadcasting notification. Uh, cattle were, were starving. We can assume that they grazed the range as closely as possible. It means that cattle could have consumed about 90%. You know, I read that. Let's get back down. Um, at the very most, there were only three pounds of forage left for each tortoise for the year. But in the early 30s, Western ranges were overrun by jackrabbits. This is from Voorhees in uh, Taylor, 1933, uh, and heavily infested with grasshoppers. Grasshoppers feed all day, jackrabbits all night. Tortoises, about seven hours per week. If the weather is not too hot or too cold for them to leave their well-insulated burrows. Uh, calculated from data presented from Nagy, and Medica 1986. <clears throat> While uh, livestock, jackrabbits, and grasshoppers were busy grubbing the, the range to uh, stave off starvation, the tranquil tortoise whiled away the time snoozing in its burrow. Then how did they survive? Easy. Easy enough, it says. They, uh, they used a different food source. Can you guess what that food source is going to be yet? The tortoise, the toothless tortoise, <laughs> I couldn't, oh, this is great. I love how the words come together like that. I, you, anybody familiar with what I do, I try to do it. The toothless tortoise, I'm so going to use that. <laughs> the toothless tortoise is ill-equipped to harvest and masticate range forage. 
The tortoise can harvest uh, only tender vegetation, and it can't masticate even that. The tortoise can't produce enough bulky, low analysis forages, forage fast enough to meet its nutritional require, requirements. <clears throat> That's again from Nagy, uh, Nagy and uh, Medica, 1986. <clears throat> They solved this problem long ago, and I've talked about this, and all makes perfect sense. We'll get to that. They solved this problem long ago. They allow other animals to do it for them. That's right. Desert tortoises feed primarily on dung. The more animals use in the range, the more dung. Makes sense, which makes more food available for tortoises. Makes sense. In the millennia <coughs> preceding the advent of domestic livestock on the range, Tortoises subs, uh, subsisted on pellets ex, uh, excreted by rabbits, deer, and bighorn, and uh, scats of predators. I, I don't know that they, they probably would. Uh, my, uh, my brother's wife has a, a tortoise, and that thing, it, it has a voracious appetite. But, uh, you know, she chops it up in the food, and she ain't feed them no dung. I was going to try to sneak some, and... Well, she'd have come undone if she'd done that. I was going to give her tortoise some, some poopy. But, uh, yeah, they do eat the poop. And I've talked this about this before, but I've seen a video, and I've never been able to find it again. It was uh, uh, Africans were eating fresh poop, and it was uh, for their nutrition. And there's um, the cow has four stomachs. It's ruminant. Uh, it does it. It's still, even though it's gone through four stomachs, you know, it's not extracted all that. I think. Uh, what did Clive and Dundee? He told me maybe maybe half. There's still a, or more, maybe 65 percent, half or 65 percent of the nutrients inside the poop. Uh, what is it? It's just you know, salad, I guess, <coughs> mushy salad. So it goes on through. <coughs> but anyways, these Africans was uh, I was eating it, and I, I I suppose if you could not catch a uh, a cow and it did come along, it's fresh poopy, uh, you could use that to uh, not starve to death. Some people might find that pretty nasty to think about, but it's good for the tortoise. <laughs> okay, where are we back to? In the millennium, amount of dung. Okay, in the millennium preceding the advent of domestic, domestic livestock on the range, they, they did, uh, he was talking about, and on predators. So tortoise population adjusted to the amount of dung available. Their numbers were low. That comes from uh, Mulhausen, uh, 1854. <clears throat> the Western Regional Extension, publication number 39, by products, by products and unusual feedstuff in livestock rations. That's uh, Bath et al., 1980, states, it is commonly estimated that 80% of the uh, uh, total nutrients and feeds were are ex, uh, excreted, pooped out by animals as manure. 80%, he's, this, this says here. It's even higher numbers than I was uh, assuming. So the desert tortoise is well adapted for making use of cow dung. Uh, four days elapsed between meals. Uh, this allows plenty of time for the tortoise to uh, complete the digestion that began in the cow's stomach. The digested food uh, moves slowly, ever so slowly, through the tortoise intestines. The toothless tortoise intestines. <laughs> now, this trip takes 17 days, says Nagy and Medica, 1986. It is a biological law that all organisms tend to increase to the limits of their food supply. Therefore, it is natural and to be expected that the tortoise, excuse me, numbers and uh, livestock numbers peaked on the public domain at the same time. Excuse me a minute. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, it is a biological law that all organisms tend to increase in the, yes, and livestock and to where it is also a natural law that if the food supply is diminished, but for any population, the population will adjust to come in balance with the reduced food supply. For 50 years, BLM has been reducing the numbers of livestock permitted on the federal range, they call 
for 50 years, desert tortoise population have been declining. Now, here we are, uh, Beaver Dam Mountains. <clears throat> this isn't far from uh, over around uh, uh, Mesquite and uh, Bunkerville, and uh, between there up in St. George, Utah, the Virgin River through there and then around, and uh, so Beaver Dam and all around. But anyway, so the Beaver Dam Mountains, we can, uh, be, we can be fairly certain that before the Mormon colonization of this area in the late 1850s, Beaver Dam Mountains in Utah, I think I was in the wrong place, in Utah was a Joshua tree savanna and a, and a bunch grass understory similar to portions of the McCullough Mountains in Nevada that have been uh, grazed have never been grazed, I'm sorry, for lack of water. That's a Bostick 1973. Because of their uh, persistence as relics, we know that uh, Bush, Muley, and uh, Indian, this is a Bush, M-U-H-L-Y, Muley, Bush, Muley, and Indian rice grass were members of this pristine grassland community. Ten years after settlement, Mormon cattle had become numerous and were grazing the range too closely to permit the Indian rice grass to mature seed. The original grassland was converted to typical, <clears throat> scrolling back to the top, <clears throat> converted to typical uh, Mojave Desert dominated by creosote bush. Um, the creosote bush, that's, uh, man, that's, uh, it, it, it's a really good fire source. It, it's not edible. I, I I don't even know that the cow would eat any of that. Anyways, I, I was trying to remember where I was going with that. Anyways, it, it has it's an incredible fuel source. I, I think, uh, and there's just thousands and thousands of miles of the creosote bush, uh, <clears throat> the chaparral. I'm, the, it's a chaparral bush is a, is a creosote. So that stuff is a biofuel, and, and if you're just harvesting, you know, trimming them and collecting, I, I would think that the desert could. Uh, uh, do what a lot of people envision uh, hemp could do as fuel, uh, biofuel. It, it would have a lot of tar and require, you know, the fracking, the same, uh, you know, fracking off the uh, the vapors and then condensing it. If you know how the process of gasoline works, uh, you get the same uh, same fuel, <clears throat> essentially, uh, biofuel, like a gasoline or a diesel. And uh, depending on all the steps that you go through, it uh, you know determines the purity. Uh, well, let's say diesel, for instance, it used to be a byproduct of uh, uh, gasoline. Then, then you know diesel, he got up to the engine, and you can you can run uh, French fry grease in, in the diesel, I guess, right? <clears throat> With some conversion. But anyways, it was a byproduct, and now we see all the industry where. Uh, you know, diesel's higher than gasoline, and it never used to be up until the last few years. But anyways, that's just something that goes along with uh, all these lies that are being told to us uh, about the ecology uh, of the desert. And, you know, there, there are certain valid points, but um, definitely big lies. And we're going to get to cure on suckling here <clears throat> pretty quick. Man, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. We got... Uh, at, Clive and Bundy's coming on at two o'clock, so and I definitely want to listen to that. I may, uh, I may have to pick up uh, next week. Let me go ahead. I want to do the want to uh, finish it. So the the intense competition for uh, forage by livestock owners was halted by the Taylor Grazing Act of 1934. The big reduction in grazing use in 1936, about 50%, didn't bring about uh, any noticeable range improvement. And another cut in authorized use was made by the shortening by was made by shortening the length of the grazing season. It was after this second cut that Woodbury and Hardy, 1948, reported a desert tortoise population density of 150 tortoises per square mile. BLM made further cuts in grazing uses uh, use in the early 50s, and again in the 60s. In 1970. 1,500 acres of tortoise habitat were fenced and closed to all grazing by livestock, sh uh, sheep. Uh, use was eliminated four years later. Uh, it comes from Combs, 1974, reported 39 tortoises per square mile. So <laughs> that's a big difference. No, no wildlife, nothing to make poop. Uh, they're 
they're starving to death. <clears throat> and I think this will speak to that here in a little bit. Uh, between Hardy census in 1948 and Coombs census in 1974, livestock grazing was reduced 100%. There was a 74% reduction in tortoise density. Now, if, uh, if you extrapolate it further, that I'm pretty sure that's going to be a zero percent of uh, population <clears throat> or 100 percent reduction in tortoise density. Rabbits were abundant in the enclosure until 1982 and tortoises could uh, meet their protein requirements by eating rabbit pellets. Now, uh, rabbit pellets were uh, scarce after 1983. The tortoises were doing so poorly that a veterinarian, that's Dr. James Jarchow, was uh, consulted by this other Dr. Jarchow in uh, 1987 and found that the, found that the six tortoises from the ex, uh, enclosures that he examined were all suffering from osteoporosis. He attributed this condition to insignificant protein in their diet. Dr. Charjow. Uh, wrote, <laughs> he wrote a prescription for these tortoises. One, he recommended a predator control program designed to eliminate those individual predators preying chiefly on this species. Uh, he recommended that uh, desert tortoise habitat should be managed to promote the resurgence of uh, this uh, Mullenbergia porteri growth and seeding campaigns should be instituted. <clears throat> Supplemental feed in the form of scattered uh, Timothy or Bermuda hay was uh, should be provided at times of drought and midsummer. <clears throat> uh, number four, additionally, enclosures should be erected in critical areas. So this uh, prescription is not backed by clinical experience. There is no evidence that any of these uh, remedies prescribed are practical and beneficial. Years of management by untested theories have brought this once thriving population to the verge of extinction. Dr. Jia Chow examined five tortoises from the Littlefield plot, which is open to uh, cattle grazing. Littlefield is, a, I, I'm going to assume that's in the strip of Arizona, Littlefield, Arizona, along the Virgin River, uh, below, the, uh, below the gorge uh, between uh, the bottom end of Utah <clears throat> into Arizona before Nevada. Uh, so Dr. Uh, Jarchow, it's like that name, Jarchow. <clears throat> he examined the five tor tortoises from Littlefield. And uh, for th uh, three of these, he reported no abnormalities were uh, evident. The abnormalities noted in the other two species were not related to their diet. He also took blood, blood samples from each tortoise and sent them to a laboratory for a complete analysis uh, from this, these data, he, he concluded they were considered presently healthy and well nourished. <clears throat> Although it is, it is coincidental and not planned, these two plots in the Beaver Dam Mountains demonstrate the relation of cattle grazing to desert tortoise welf welfare. Cattle have been excluded from Utah from the Utah plot for 19 years. The tortoise uh, exhibit the tortoises exhibit symptoms of protein starvation associated with high mortality. The Arizona plot is open to cattle. The tortoises are healthy and, and well nourished. If tortoise biology just, <coughs> excuse me are correct, then areas from which livestock have been excluded for a long time should have thriving tortoise populations. On the other hand, the science of rain ecology predicts that uh, excluding cattle will reduce the tortoise population and they will become rare. Cattle excluded areas. Uh, the cattle have been excluded from the Nevada test site and the desert wildlife range for many years. The tortoises are rare and doing poorly in both areas. A small tortoise population was studied intensely for, uh, for 10 years in Rock Valley on the Nevada test site. <clears throat> from which cattle had been excluded for 40 years. The tortoise, uh, the, uh, the, sorry, these tortoises were under continual stress. They suffered from a scarcity of water, insi uh, insufficient nitrogen, that's from protein in their diet, and, uh, and a, an excess of potassium. 
<clears throat> they could uh, excrete the potassium in their urine as other, other animals do, but uh, urinating would have left them dehydrated. So they, they, they maintain it, held it in, retained it, that is. <clears throat> Tortoises urinate only when they have water to drink. They could have uh, converted the potassium to an insoluble form and excrete it in their scats. This requires nitrogen, which uh, would have come from uh, catabolizing their own tissue. That's Nagy in the Medica in 1986. This stress could be relieved if the tortoises had access to their natural uh, food source, cow dung. Fresh cow dung is 85 to 90 percent water. Bees and butterflies drink from fresh uh, cow pies. Dung, cow dung could also supply the high quality protein tortoises require. The excess uh, potassium came from consuming plant material, high in potassium, but low in other nutrients. Thousands of years of adaptation to a highly nutritious dung diet has left the desert tortoise ill-prepared to switch to a bulky diet of fresh plant material. Nagy and Medica, 1986, <clears throat> found that during the spring active period, desert tortoises would not or could not eat enough plant material to, ma to maintain their body weight. During the lush spring period, desert tortoises were on a reducing diet. <clears throat> I think I might make it. Uh, summary and conclusions, the historic record shows that desert tortoises have coexisted with cattle for 300 years in California and Mexico and at least 100 years elsewhere. The highest desert uh, tortoise densities known occurred at times when overgrazing by livestock was the severest ever known. The fewer the cattle on the range, the fewer the number of the tortoises. Excluding cattle for many years endangers, endangers the tortoise population. It is known all over the world and even well understood in developing countries of Africa that overuse of the range by one species of animals will degrade the range uh, for that species and its numbers will decline. But this same time overuse will improve the range for other species and its numbers will increase. Uh, severe overgraz overgrazing uh, of the public domain by livestock after World War I improved the habitat for tortoise and brought on a population explosion similar to the famous deer eruption on the Kaibab. BLM's cons uh, conservative grazing management program is designed to uh, restore degraded by years of overuse by livestock. Restoring the range is beneficial to some wildlife, bighorn for instance, but it is detrimental to tortoises. Uh, like jackrabbits and mule deer, tortoises, uh, they thrive on deteriorated uh, rangelands. Declining numbers of desert tortoise since the Taylor Grazing Act of 1934 is a direct result of decreased livestock grazing and improved range conditions. That, that's almost oxymoronic to say. And then it goes on with the uh, uh, all this that is cited here. Literature cited, oh, <clears throat> and that'll be included. To three minutes, and I might have to overrun just a little bit. Let's uh, take you down there, Jordan. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need a drink. And where are we? I'm thinking that's where I'm going to have to end. <clears throat> I'll come back next week. And I, I think I will do that. And we're going we're gonna to end with this video. Got to love it. The so-called best science expert doesn't even know cattle have cloven hooves. Not to mention... The supposed harm in this cattle battle, tail, tail, tail of the tortoise and the hare, hoof and hide, the truth saga. Try that again. The hoof and hide the truth saga and beyond to the actual shoot to kill and cover up. That's what happened. USA versus Bundy at all. Witness number 303. That's me. Vincent Easley. Did a shoot to kill and cover up policy set the stage for the Bundy Ranch. Stand off. Y'all remember, I said earlier, it looks like the BLM is out there to kill. I'm pretty certain. So let's, uh, did we get it in here? I got the, uh-oh, it's going to change me altogether, ain't it? I did the wrong. <laughs> get back here. How come the, I got put the wrong link in there? So, that's perfect. We'll pick up with that one next time. And, uh, I'd say that's just, uh, gratuitous. I've been, uh, I'm going to go kill my players, recorders, and I'm going to leave this play, and I'm going to actually go get uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna let uh, Clive and Benny play so so <clears throat> nobody's on right now and um no we're gonna do it so I'm gonna quit right now when I can and give me two minutes to go get it stop recording here.